Hello, dear learners. Welcome to another lesson. So today we are going to see about the poem, The Victim by Francis Dugan. So this poem, it falls under the broad category of Holocaust literature. So first, let's get an understanding of what is Holocaust. So Holocaust, it was also called as uh, Shohar. It was a genocide, especially centered or it was centered around the European Jews. They were under attack during the World War II. Especially it was under the Nazi rule, which was under by Hitler, that, you know, between 1941 and 45, that many Jews were systematically eliminated from Germany. And it is uh, believed that nearly 6 million Jews, you know, who lived across Germany and Europe, they were uh, killed in brutal ways. So this was a program. It was a mass killing. It was, you know, uh, they just wanted to exterminate the entire race. So it was racism at its highest point. So some relative terms that are associated with the Holocaust are anti-Semitism. So anti-Semitism, the meaning is, it's a hostility to or uh, it's a prejudice against the Jewish people, you know, altogether. And uh, the Jews who were, uh, you know, under the attack, they lived in ghettos. These were like these gated communities which the Jewish people had, but they were under strict surveillance 24 by 7, and they also had to follow strict laws. So it was, uh, you know, very tedious life that these people did have. And uh, another symbol of the Holocaust was the concentration camps. So the Jews who were captive, you know, held captives, they were transported to concentration camps, and, uh, you know, women were. Uh, uh, you know, segregated from the men, families were broken up, and uh, gender-wise, age-wise, people were segregated, and they were put into these different camps. And uh, even in the camps, their life was not easy. They underwent a lot of torture and trauma. And uh, the ex example of uh, the camp was, you know, the Auschwitz camp, which is made reference by Annie Frank in her diary. So we do have a lot of works that center around, uh, you know, the Holocaust. So there are different perspectives and works that, uh, you know, uh, focus on uh, the Jewish trauma that they underwent during that period. So there were the voices of the victims, meaning the people who, are, who were first-hand victims or who were the first-hand witnesses of the Holocaust. Then you also have, you know, testimonials of the survivors. There were people who lived through the uh, Holocaust and they even survived the Holocaust. So you do have their works as also, like in the form of biographies and memoirs, that uh, you actually, you know, help us relive or, uh, you know, us re uh, reinvent the memories of the Holocaust. And uh, there were also accounts of resistance that, you know, uh, people who did, go through the Holocaust. There are some unsung uh, heroes of Holocaust. There were both Jewish and non-Jewish people, especially the non-Jewish people who did help their Jewish counterparts, who saved the counterparts. So even, uh, you know, their accounts, their stories have been um, brought under this category of Holocaust literature. Then there are stories of uh, rescue and heroism. Well, you know, there were people who did escape the, you know, tortures of uh, the gas chambers, or it could be the concentration camps, or just they just escaped from uh, the centers around Europe where the anti-Semitic feeling was at its highest. And then you also had the German experience. So German, Germany was like the epicenter of this anti-Semitic wave that was, you know, sweeping through Europe. And there were these Germans who did talk about it. There were people both from the uh, you know Jewish community and the non-Jewish community who did share their experience during the Holocaust times. And it does just not, you know, the literature that is under Holocaust does not just stop with accounts of people who've gone through it or who have, uh, people who have witnessed it or people who survived through it or people who were not spoken about. It is also, you know, about the stories of people who have uh, responded after that. So the aftermath, the response, the reflection, there were people who have, you know, uh, pondered about what are the lessons did we learn from this, or from this whole uh, experience, this racism. What did we learn from all this? So even those were, you know, written under literature uh, in various forms, various genres, fiction, drama, and poetry did 
take up uh, you know the accounts of these uh, people and it has been uh, recorded as holocaust literature so for further reference you can also you know go through the link that i've shared over here so uh, as we are thinking about the holocaust literature and literature and literary works that are, do represent the holocaust we do have a writer here with about whom we are going to see who is called Alexander Francis Dugan Tarlington, also called as Francis Dugan. He was of Irish or birth, he was from Ireland, Jewish origin. And uh, we see him, you know, uh, writing about racism, writing about the Jewish experience. He did belong to the Jewish community, but he had not been a first hand. Uh, no witness of the Holocaust. He's not experienced it, but he's just listened to stories of other people's accounts of the Holocaust. And uh, from those, you know, he has responded to that. And uh, his works do, you know, talk a lot about this trauma which his community had undergone. So his uh, most important work, we could say, is called Racism is Around Me Everywhere. So this is a you know poem that does recount his experience, his personal thoughts on racism, and it is believed that he st started writing around the 1973, and of date uh, he's actually written around 9,000 poems. So we do see that he's you know a, a, an avid writer. So let's just go into the poem, "The Victim" by Francis Dugan. So this poem, uh, you know. It represents various thoughts. It's not like I mentioned. It is not a first-hand experience of the po poet. Sorry, and uh, it also, you know, talks about the experience of one person. Let's find out from the poem. Let's go into the poem and find out. So he begins by saying, "Someone mentioned the Holocaust." The old Jewish man said, "No, such word I do not wish to hear. That happened years ago." Then he slowly folded up his sleeve and numbers etched in blue told of the sufferings he'd known and all he'd been through. A silence fell over one and all across the club room flew and in his presence holocaust not mentioned anymore. We had almost us in the flesh one who had lived through hell but I wish that he could have spoke of sufferings he could tell. So here he is, uh, you know, presenting to us uh, a person, to be specific, an old Jewish man. And this man has actually a victim of the Holocaust. He is a witness of the Holocaust. But when he hears the word Holocaust, he does not want any reference to it. He does not want to be associated with or he does not want any associated memories with the Holocaust. So he wishes and he says, no, I don't know. I don't want to be, you know, be associated or even mention the word Holocaust. But then slowly he rolls up his sleeve and we find, you know, there is this mark that is etched in blue on his hand. So I've just given a representative picture over there for you to have an idea. So it's just marked in numbers. So uh, the reality about this is like uh, when the Jewish people were sent to these concentration camps, their identities were erased, their names were removed. All they were left with was these numbers, you know, like these prisoner numbers which they were given. And that was their identity. So for this old man also, you know, the numbers that are etched in blue is a reminder of how his identity had been lost during the Holocaust. So he does not want to remember it, but unfortunately it is etched on his hand for lifetime. And as he does this, you know, there was an absolute pin drop silence. So here we get to know the setting of where the, you know, Francis had met this old Jewish man. It's in a club room and everyone over there went silent. Not just to know about it. It's like a moment of, you know, unison. The audience is in unison and they are silence. They are just silent spectators and no one is able to move. No one is able to react. And here they had somebody 
who had lived through the Holocaust. But unfortunately, this person does not want to recount uh, or, you know, retell his sufferings or the suffering of his community. So, you know, even the poet, he wishes that this person could have spoke about the suffering. But here, you know, we might think he is insensitive. But uh, we could actually, you know, think it that Dilgun wants to understand his people's suffering a little more. That's the reason over here, you know, he expects that the man could have spoken a little more. So let's move on to the next stanza. So in the next stanza, he, he goes on to end, don't mention Holocaust to me with one wave of a hand, a silent spell all one and all. How could we understand the agony he had been through, the torture and the pain? We did not mention Holocaust. No, not to him again. So in the second stanza, we see that, uh, you know, with just with a wave of a hand, this uh, old Jewish gentleman, he, he just silences the crowd. He silences all the people who want to know more. And again, a silence fell over everyone. And how could they just understand? You know, even if he recounts, retells all the sufferings, will the crowd be able to relate? Will the people be able to understand what they actually were through? It is a difficult question to answer. So he had gone through a lot of agony, the torture, the pain. You know, it was a lot for him. It was a lot of memories. It was a heavy burden. And uh, understandably, the crowd did understand that. And so they did not mention the word Holocaust to him ever again. Moving on. Now here is the poet. My heart went to that Jewish man who sought no sympathy. He wanted to block out his past as a bad memory. Don't mention Holocaust to me and little else he said. But I could picture living soul whose thoughts were with the dead. So here is the empathetic, sympathetic feeling of the poet, which is, you know, brought out to these lines. So we see that, uh, you know, his heart did go out. He felt, did feel, uh, you know, what this uh, Jewish man was going through. But this Jewish man did not want sympathy. He wanted to just block out this memory. He, it was a bad memory for him. He did not want any association. He wanted to be disassociated with this memory. And uh, since, you know, he made this thing of request of not, you know, being mentioned about the word Holocaust, even the others did not mention. But, the, you know, the poet is able to pictureize what this man is actually going through. You know, although this man says, no, I don't want to, you know, think about those memories, but his thoughts are with the people who died, the people who sacrificed their lives, the people who were the victims of you know, the Holocaust, the dead people. So this man who is still living is haunted by the memories of the dead. So here, that's the reason we could say that he does not want to be associated with the word Holocaust. Let's move on to the remaining stanzas. So that night I did not sleep too well. I had a recurring dream. I watched the hungry slowly dry. I heard the tortured scream. I saw a grey-haired Jewish man, the sorrow on his face. And I was in another time, a dark and sadder place. So here is, you know, the poet fully empathizing. He is almost reliving everything. Now, that night he could not sleep, but still in his sleep he did have some recurring dreams. And all the recurring dreams were the images of Holocaust. You know, he saw people die slowly, the tortured screams he could hear. He did not witness it. But, you know, the memories, the pictures which he had seen, with the, you know, the, the retelling of people he might have heard earlier. You know, all those memories. And with this man's, you know, the face, the reaction, everything has, you know, it has an impact on him. And so he saw the grey-haired Jewish man. There was sorrow, deep sorrow on this man's face. He was in a darker place. He was in a very sad place. And, you know, that same feeling transports into the poet. And he is also moved to a darker and sadder place. So then he woke and I went to sleep. The dream returned to me. Of old Jewish men with tragic past who sought no sympathy. I see a young man in his prime with a hunger-wasted frame, with numbers branded on his hand they have robbed him of his name so one more another level of 
you know, the empathetic feeling where he now thinks or imagines the same old Jewish man as a younger man in his younger days, how he must have received this, you know, these number marks, this tattoo mark that he had written, he had uh, received in his hand. They had robbed him of his identity. Like I said, you know, the names were erased. People were just given numbers. So here there's an erasure of identity that had happened. And the poet is able to relate to that erasure of identity. So moving on to the last part, which is, someone mentioned the Holocaust. The old Jewish man said, no, such word I do not wish to hear that happened years ago. Then he slowly folded up his sleeve and numbers etched in blue told of the sufferings he had known and all he had been through. So the last lines, it's just a summation of, you know, what the Jewish old man wanted, how he does not want to be associated, disassociated with the you know, memory of the Holocaust, and uh, he does not want to be related to something, he does not wishes to recall something which happens, happened years ago. But unfortunately, even if he wishes, it's not going to happen because the memory of it is forever etched on his hand in blue. And it also spoke about the suffering. So... That number, it represented not only the erasure of this old Jewish man's identity, it was a reminder of the sufferings. It was a reminder, an imprint of the memory. Even if he wishes to disassociate, this sad memory, this dark memory is forever etched on his hand. So I hope you were able to understand the various meanings that, you know, Francis Dugan wants to convey to his poem, The Victim. So the victim here could be, you know, the dead victims of Holocaust, the Jewish man who is experienced, the old Jewish man, he is a victim. Even the poet also on another level could be, you know, considered as a victim because he is also haunted by this, you know, memories of Holocaust. Now he is transported, he feels the, you know, feeling he, he is able to relate totally, although he did not live through him. So we see that the victim of a bad event is not just the person who goes to it. It is also the, per, the people who are associated with them, the families, the community. And it is like a cycle. It never ends. So I would like to you know, finish off by showing you some pictures of the Holocaust, some horrifying pictures they might be. So you do see how these are, you know, the Jewish people in the concentration camps, they were given the same uniform. Their heads were shaved off, so they didn't have to, you know, maintain them. There was little maintenance for, uh, you know, them. They were poorly fed. Malnutrition was a reason for many deaths. We see how the children are separate, separated, segregated from their families. And they were also given, you know, uniform uh, clothing. The older people we find, they were not uh, provided with proper clothing, food. And uh, there's a horrifying picture of, uh, you know, this man who's almost in bones. And those are some. And uh, you also see how they stayed together, how, you know, they didn't have even spaces. They had to share spaces for the relaxing or sleeping. So this, uh, these are some horrifying pictures. A few more pictures. You can see how people are in all in bones. You know, it's such horrible sights. And uh, you know, behind this also, you see how dead bodies are just heaped. People who were, you know, sent to the concentration camps. The end punishment was gas chambers how they were gassed away and how they were deported, how the dead bodies were deported from these concentration camps. So finally, I would like to you know, finish off with the picture of uh, the gas chamber. So these, this is a picture of the concentration camps, how you know the gas chamber was used, how people were just pushed in like cattle, gas was released and they were just executed. So this uh, poem is you know, filled with a lot of sad memories it is a recounting of the holocaust it uh, you know helps us ponder on uh, what levels of cruelty history has witnessed 
and we hope that even you know in the future we do not go through another holocaust again so thank you all for uh, being patient listeners and i hope you were able to gain some knowledge and insight about the holocaust literature from the perspective of a third generation jewish person called francis to so thank you everyone